Welcome to the channel. I'm Phil. And I'm Stacy. And we're you, me, and the RV. And in this video, we are heading from Pennsylvania to Red Bay, Alabama to have some repairs done on our 33AA. Yep. And fill you in about what happened with this. I know that looks pretty crazy, right? Yeah, that was crazy. So if you think that is crazy, which happened at Red Bay at the service center, type crazy in the comments below. All caps. Yes, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. We are also going to talk about what it cost us at Red Bay. So stick around. So you are not going to want to miss a second. That's right. All right, roll intro. We've been in our friend's driveway now for about 31 hours. We've been on our own power, um, not charging, no alternator, no generator. And I am down to 34% after 31 hours. Now we're not using any power inside except the residual draws from the TVs um, that are plugged in and any other small electronics and our residential fridge. So um, Battleborn has definitely um, extended our life, our, our power supply life um, off grid. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to start up the generator and, and charge them back up. But um, with my old lead acid batteries, would not have come close to that, I can tell you that. We've been driveway surfing for about a week at our friend's house and to keep the batteries charged, somewhat charged, on a, on a trickle, I ran an extension cord from Ruby into their garage. And how I did that was I ran my 50 amp cord, I stretched it out all the way and then I used my 30 amp dog bone to power it down and then I used my uh, 110 adapter to it and then I plugged in my extension cord which is a 15 amp 12 gauge extension cord heavy duty I went with this one specifically um, because it was the um, shortest one in that gauge and that amperage that I could use for my trickle charge and once I got it all plugged in or actually let me back up before I got it all plugged in I went inside to my magnum controller and I dialed down my shore power to 10 amps so I go to my shore button and you'll see on here shore max is 10 amps so I dialed it down and all I have to do to do that is just change or rotate the dial here to select my amperage my shore max which was 10 amps I didn't want to overload the circuit that's why I went with that this is a 15 amp cord pulling from a 20 amp breaker you with me so we've been able to charge the batteries without running the generator in their garage or in their driveway so it's worked for us pretty well we are on the road again finally on the move after sitting for a whole week um at hershey and the hershey show was really cool we had a great time yeah we did not expect the number of people uh that showed up to um, meet us and greet us at the gas stop booth but we absolutely had a great time i could have talked forever but well phil can always talk forever <laughs> but you know when when you get to talk in rvs and and anything rv um specific uh, I'm all in, so you've got my attention, and uh, it was it was just great meeting the folks um, and, and putting names to faces yeah. for those that comment, so it was a really, really great show for us. Yeah, so again, thank you everyone who took time <clears throat> to stop by and say hi. Um, it was hot out there, and some of you guys <laughs> waited a little bit to chat with us, and we so appreciate it. You guys are the best. Yeah, absolutely, and this is the reason why we're doing this. I mean, we, we just love what we're doing, and we hope yeah. that we can share that with you we are hauling it to red bay alabama yep. um in case you missed it a couple of videos ago we talked about a leak we have in our kitchen sink drain we're headed there now for the repair yeah ruby needs a little tlc so we're going to take this opportunity to not only address the drain issue but a couple other little things that while we're there Minor we'll have stuff. yeah we'll have the pros take a peek at yeah so this is going to be a three-day haul to red bay um so of course we'll take you along show you where we're staying overnight we've made it to our first stop on our trip to red bay and we are at a casino and as you can see we parked right under a big old lake for safety yeah we're far enough away that we're not uh, impeding traffic or parking spots but we also like to have us a, a nice light so that people can see us from the casino and we're gonna go in and maybe catch a Saturday football game and maybe have a beer and just chill for the rest of the night and some grub I'm starving <laughs> he's always starving we only pulled out one slide last night while we were staying here at the casino uh, just to be considerate of other cars around us even though we didn't disconnect the, uh, the Jeep uh, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna check all the connections uh, we're still gonna 
do our light checks and our wheel checks and make sure everything's working right. All in all, very good stop, but we've got about 10 more hours until we get to Red Bay. Um, so we're going to try to knock a good chunk of that out today, probably six, seven hours. Uh, we'll pace ourselves. So tonight we're stopping at a Cracker Barrel. It is our first time staying overnight at a Cracker Barrel. The Walmart had signs posted and a bunch of write-ups in all states saying overnight parking is not allowed. So it's also not a 24-hour Walmart. So I don't know if there's an ordinance or what. So we decided to come on over here to Cracker Barrel and we're going to give it a try for the night. And plus we'll get a great breakfast in the morning as we send off. We made it just across the Tennessee line, so we don't really have that much further to drive before we get to Red Bay, Alabama. So I guess Giz is enjoying his little moment outside here. So I don't know if you can hear it or not, but we definitely have the generator running and the AC's on. When we parked, it was 95 inside the rig, so it's definitely time to cool it off. We have to charge our batteries anyway, so we're gonna be charging them with the AC on, so not only us, but Poor little Gizzy can get all cooled off. I think we're ready to roll. We are. We are bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and got a full belly of Cracker Barrel breakfast. That's right. And we have three and a half hours until we are in Red Bay. Of course, I don't have a reservation anywhere. Um, and we've been told on the Facebook page that all the RV parks are full, so we'll see where we end yeah. up. Yeah. As one guy said, people are driving around looking for a spot to drop anchor. Good Navy term. You ready to go? <laughs> all right. We're going. If you're planning a trip to Red Bay like we had to do, there are some changes here that you should probably be aware of. First of all, the video that we did a year ago is all true except for one thing. You can no longer park here if you are outside of your one year warranty. And as you can see behind us, there's fence poles and empty sites. This first row is gone, can't be used. Nope, and in case you're wondering, the reason for all these changes, the reason why they aren't letting anybody stay here is because there was an accident a few months ago. I say accident, but to me, it's not really an accident. I don't think that was an accident. All right, stop, stop, stop. Hold on, hold on. We have the real scoop from a Tiffin employee. This couple went, they were at Red Bay uh, a few weeks prior getting some work done. And they had some other issues, so they came right back. Well, they thought that because they had already been there for the same issues, that they should already be in a bay. And, the, and in the front of the line. You're right. And the wife of the couple decided she was tired of waiting. She was going to put her RV in the bay so it was ready for them when they came in the <laughs> next morning. Can you believe that? Only there was something already in the bay. Yeah, so, and she was under the influence of something. So she jumped in her RV, awning out, still plugged in, put it in drive and flipped it around and punched it right into a bay. Um, when she did that, her awning looked like it was a javelin spear <laughs> into the side of, of Bay 14, I believe. And what she didn't know on the other side of the bay door was there was a brand new Phaeton yeah. being serviced so that it could be delivered the next morning to its new owners. So did you picture that? The service bay door was actually closed. Right. She plowed through it and then slammed into the back well, of another rig. She plowed through it, hit the Phaeton, and hit it so hard the transmission fell out of the Phaeton. I, I, I just can't even imagine. It, that's so crazy. So if you think that is as crazy as we do, type the word WOW down below in the comments. All caps, of course, because that was WOW for that, sure. That is nuts. And she was drunk and she was arrested along with her husband. Yep. Of course, after she was cut out of her rig because yeah. they couldn't get her out. Well, when they, the first responders showed up, um, she was basically pinned in the driver's seat, kind of in and out of consciousness, foot on the gas and the tires were just spinning. So oh there was, gosh. I mean, if you can imagine smoking the tires and this happened. Of an RV. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of an you don't RV. see that too often. So the whole situation um, was just crazy to begin yes. with. I mean, it's from the you can't make this up file. <laughs> um, but because of that, they had to make some changes. And if you would like to see the news report um, from the local newspaper about this lady being arrested and her charges, I have it linked in our blog post. So hit the uh, joining blog post down below and that'll have the links for that as well. Wow, was all we, could, we kept saying. So the changes had to be made and unfortunately, uh, we, the Tiffin owner, are having to adjust accordingly. It's yeah. not, it's not it's a not showstopper. No, no, it's not a showstopper. No. Um, we just ended up at an RV park about five to six miles away from here, yep. still paying the same $25 a night that we would be paying like yep. we did here yep. last year. 
for full hookups. It's not glamorous. We're going to show you all the parks that they're recommending in the local area, show you what the prices are so you can choose. But as far as everything else, it's still the same. Norris came out to our rig yesterday, just like when we were here staying in, in the uh, Camp Red Bay. So nothing else has changed. Your customer service is still going to be outstanding. This first campground is convenient camping and it is 25 bucks a night, full hookups, and it is literally across the street from Tiffin. I am looking at the Allegro Club right now, so it's pretty convenient to Tiffin. Um, they don't have that many sites, but right next door is, I think it's First Class RV Park, and it also is full hookups. Most of these little campgrounds are self-pay so that they trust you're actually gonna drop your payment into the little mailbox. So at the end of your stay, whether you've been there for three nights or a week, you just drop in either a check or cash into the uh, mailbox in an envelope, and that's how you pay. This RV park is Red Bay Self Service RV Park, which again is just down the street from Red Bay. So again, grab a lot, full hookups, 25 bucks a night. If you want a different option other than just the parking lots, well, there is a shiny, spanking, brand new RV park that you are able to come to now. Yeah, and its spanking new name is called Red Bay Acres. <laughs> yeah, and it is actually an RV park and not a gravel lot. So they are going to offer a lot more for you. They have paved sites, or what, 60 feet, your picnic table. They have a lake. They're building a restaurant. They have a general store. Yep, they have pickleball. They have a dog area. Full hookups, 30, 50, 110. They're gonna have cable and they're gonna have Wi Fi in the yes. park. Yes, they said they're gonna have repeaters or towers or whatever you wanna call it about every fourth or fifth site. So they are planning to have some serious Wi Fi power happening here. So if you're working, it might be a good option for you. Yeah, so it's uh, it's wide open. There's no trees to block any satellite interference. <laughs> Which um, was apparently intentional by the owner because yes. he likes a satellite just like Phil does. Yes, we did meet the owner and he is an RV. So he knows uh, what our viewers look for and yeah. like when they're in a campground and you can tell by the way This is laid out. It's a horseshoe shaped mm -hmm. um, park um, And I, I think this is a great option to what's going on currently at the Tiffin Service Center And that is if you want to pay the extra money while you're here, of course all this new fancy uh, pretty grass comes with a cost so Right now, they're charging about 37 bucks a night because the Wi-Fi is not up yet. Literally, they just opened on Monday. Their regular price is going to be $49.99. Mm -hmm. And then if you want an upgraded site, which is going to be um, a little bit bigger and have your own fire pit, that one's going to be $59.99. $59. And it comes with a 12 by 12 patio area. Yeah, so a larger uh, patio. Yeah. So the restaurant, as I said, is due to open in October, and they're going to name all their food after... Uh, Tiffin rig so um, you know you can go in and see if you have a Zephyr you can get the Zephyr burger which is the biggest burger there I, and I think it's a pound or a half pound burger yeah yeah, yeah. so that's gonna be really cute our red is going to be the chili burger yes so they will be serving breakfast and lunch and of course the restaurant will be open to anyone not just um, those here at the campground yeah so this is a pretty nice option compared to what else is laid out around Red Bay and in Belmont Mississippi and of course, I'm going to include links to all of the RV parks in the area, including ones we did not show you, um, with links um, and prices and phone numbers on our blog. We're here at the Tiffin store and I picked up some extra AC um, filters um, so that I can take out the old ones, wash them and let them dry and just put the new ones in and then I'll just rotate them. So good find here at the Tiffin store. The guys here in the shop uh, in Red Bay taking off part of the panel here on the Red Bay side and they can see the connection into the great tank for the kitchen sink drain. What they're going to do, uh, the plan is right now they're going to cut part of it off right above where it goes into the great tank, cut it off with the sink, pull it out and run a whole new line and then couple it right here above the great tank. We'll see how easy it's going to be to cut it, pull it, the hose back through. Uh, that should be fairly easy, but getting the hose back in um, and reconnected They've already cut the pipe on the wet bay side, the drain line, and now the plan is to pull it out through, um, back out through the trough and and um, through, I, I think they're going to pull it this way um, and try to pull it out from the inside. Either way, they're going to pull it out. So they got to cut it from inside. They've already cut the other side. Um, and then they're going to measure a new pipe, one whole solid piece, and then they got to fish it back through and reconnect it. We'll see, that's the plan. So right now, I've got to clean out the base so they can get in kind of in the middle and help feed the, the hose or the drain um, to the gray tank connection. There's the break. Oh, wow. 
It was split on both sides. Shit, that was cool. Go ahead, push, Scotty. We pulled out our furnace so we could get a better uh, grasp and look at the drain line coming in from the slide trough below. So, this is the back side of the cabinets, the area you're seeing here. New drain line is run and connected to the gray tank. It's back through the uh, trough, and now they got to do is just attach it to the back of the kitchen sink. This bad boy should be good to go. We are done. These two miracle workers here have fixed Ruby, fixed her drain, fixed the slide glide. So Scotty and Josh are miracle workers. Thank you. Thank you. So they knocked out everything um, and then some and, and held a little training on my part so I can hopefully fix some of these things down the road. So that was good. Yeah. So we appreciate it guys. I'm, I'm really no and one of the guys has a son who wants to be on YouTube. So. Hudson, this will be you someday, buddy. There you go. Your dad's 15 seconds of fame right here, buddy. <laughs> so here's the moment you guys have all been waiting for. Of course, we saved it to the end, and that was what did all this work cost us? Yeah, so the, the main issue that we needed to get fixed was the kitchen sink drain leak. And it turned out to be the bulk of our, our total cost at Tiffin. Um, so the two technicians... Um, that were troubleshooting and, and running new hose and, and fixing the problem, the labor alone on that was $190, mm -hmm. okay, which is not bad. Yeah. Um, our whole bill was $340. So $190 um, was labor for the sink drain, and the part, the 20 feet of hose that they replaced, was $33, yeah. okay? I mean, you can't, you can't beat the, the, the price and the customer service yeah. at Tiffin. The other issue that we had was I had a slide glide that I, that had broken off and I found it while doing my routine maintenance. Our um, annual maintenance. Our yeah. annual maintenance, that's right. Um, and if you haven't seen that, we'll link that video above um, to show how I found it and, and what exactly I'm talking about when I say a slide glide. And for the fix for that um, was $33 as well um, for the part. And luckily, um, uh, it was four bolts that removed the, the two slide glides, and then they slid a whole new plate in there with the plastic glides on yeah. there. Um, so again, not that expensive. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Uh, they charged us $19 in labor for that um, because of how easy it was to replace that. So a couple of other things that I had replaced or repaired was a running light on the, uh, or a running uh, reflector on the outside of the RV. It was cracked, they replaced it. Um, that was, I think, um, eight dollars. Can't beat that. Um, uh, another thing that I had repaired was a front end cap running light, um, which I just bought the part and replaced it myself. It was that easy to do, and that was. Oh, I'm sorry, that was eight dollars. The reflector light that I had um, changed was three dollars and ninety-two cents. Yeah. So, again. so really, really um, worth every penny. If you've had some repair work done in the past to your RV, no matter what kind of RV it is or where you had it done, if you could post some of that down below in our comments, it will really help people researching, trying to decide what RV is best for them um, based on maintenance costs. So if you choose to do that, you don't even have to write sentences. Just put your rig, what rig you have, um, how much it costs, what was repaired, and if you went to the manufacturer or if you went to another service provider that would be so helpful for everyone yeah that's a good call thanks for hanging out with us today make sure you hit that subscribe button give us a thumbs up and hit the notification bell and we will roll the bloopers you give me the side eye I am you ready that's your part I forgot what I was saying dang no. it Damn, all right hang on one more time well, all right, say I, it I just got stuck don't try it just say it all right so we're here at the Tiffin store and I... all right you us heading wait so we're, we're going to take, all right, hold on. Yeah. It's called Red Bay Acres. <laughs> Let's do Sorry. Again. Yeah. Not a buffet. <laughs> <clears throat> Give us a thumb, thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> I went. <laughs> Shoot uh. me.